I'm doing a hike today in place of the gym and I wanted to do a short video for YouTube and also for my patrons first and there's a few topics that I wanted to cover I feel like this is gonna be in a way and you might hear talking and other things in the background off and on so just a heads up but one of the things I wanted to talk about was the part two to the sacred prostitute but I also wanted to go into um, the concept of twin flames a bit I actually already did two videos on that I decided not to release my second video on that to YouTube reason being is although it was very cool to kind of look back on it really didn't reflect a lot of my current views so I felt that it was more prudent to do a more updated video and uh, talk about where I stand on that now a little bit I also want to go into different types of cyclical journeys on the path and touch on a few other miscellaneous things. So yeah, let me go ahead and just roll with it. This is going to be a very go with the flow video. So although I will do some editing, I'm unlikely to do much. I want this to be as authentic as possible and as raw as possible. So let's get into it. One of the things I wanted to talk about um, regarding the part two of the sacred prostitution video that I didn't touch on in the first one is the idea that men can also be, you know, those particular healing presences. Men can also heal. Men can also activate. Now, even though historically it is more common for the women to hold that space, as she is the universe and the portal between worlds, men also have the ability to stimulate the Kundalini through sacred sexual contact and also to provide healing to the feminine now it's very important and I don't think I touched on this much in the last of you the sacred prostitutes did a lot of preparation for those types of practices so they did a lot of meditation they did a lot of I'm channeling right now sorry guys give me a second rituals there was a lot of writing the term that we would use writing um, like when we talk about a spirit writing you could also call it they were portals for spirits for you know gods and goddesses and things of that nature so there was a lot of that going on they had certain diets they had certain practices their whole life was dedicated to sacred prostitution they were temple priestesses so it's important nowadays if you are going to practice sacred prostitution to be mindful of the types of energies that you are mingling with because these women were well trained in the ability to transmute those energies to remove different types of you know attachments things of that nature um, they were highly attuned and aware so they knew when you know the person was ready they knew 
when that person was ready to make an offering of themselves in, in a sense and become open for that experience so just as I mentioned in the first video it's not wise to you know just go around and sleep with randos right um, that's not what sacred prostitution is sacred prostitution is the act of healing through sex and historically or historically if it's a man this was done in a very specific ritualized manner and hold on a second guys I'm trying to figure out where I'm going <laughs> like which direction am I taking okay and I'll go this way <laughs> no that's uh hold on so what I was trying to what I was trying to say is that some kid did a raspberry in the background. I've got to like bring my focus back, guys. Sorry. Okay. So. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love those kind of serendipitous moments. So, um, what I'm trying to say is that modern prostitution and and or being what modern folk would call promiscuous quote unquote it's not the same thing as sacred prostitution please don't get that twisted sacred prostitution is a spiritual act of offering oneself to the divine feminine mother and in doing so activating the god self if i were to put it any clearer that's about as clear as i can put it so, this is such a beautiful trail, guys. I'm going to flip so you can see. So, I just wanted you guys to see this. It's pretty cool. Anyway, back around. Okay. So, back to what I was saying. Whether you're a man or a woman, you have to be very selective about who you are going to be intimate with. That doesn't mean you have to be monogamous. That doesn't mean there's a certain way to go about it. That doesn't even mean you have to have a relationship. Or even a situationship. But the people that you're being intimate with still have to be carefully vetted out and chosen. For lack of a better word. Because nowadays we're not living in those sacred temple times. Nowadays... This is so beautiful. Nowadays, we're living in times when people are very careless with their sexual energy for the most part. And it's either repressed or it's treated frivolously, one of the two extremes. So, if you are intimate with somebody and they have not done a certain appropriate amount of inner work, that is going to reflect in you. So whether you are a man or a woman, if the person that you're intimate with has not done some semblance of inner work, if they're not at a compatible vibration, if they are coming with the energy to take from you instead of to give themselves as an offering, to their own divine selves, the divine is an extension, and to receive that gift of Kundalini and, and Tantra healing. I'm out of breath, guys, because <laughs> I'm still getting over, like, you know, a cold. So I'm almost fully recovered, but it's actually me a little out of breath, <laughs> which is why I stayed away from the gym. And I was like, I'm going to go to go on a hike, which I love doing anyway. Now I just don't know which direction I want to go with. Gemini problems, am I right? So especially if you're a woman, as women, well, you know, I know some people may not agree with this, but they are receivers by nature, okay? They are the embodiment of chaos, the embodiment of the dark womb. They take things into themselves, and it doesn't mean that they don't have the capability to project things out. We all possess 
feminine and masculine energy just like men can take in as well you know um but if you are a sacred prostitute by nature and you're you know having an intimate encounter with somebody that is not on your wavelength then and you're a woman a female then you're essentially taking in all of their unprocessed shadows and all their issues and you are taking that in so that would mean that you would have to transmute that otherwise it can lead to you know energetic complications and eventually illness so this is why it's important and i mean if you feel drawn to do it and some of you may have some unresolved you know contracts with certain people you might feel the need to do that and that probably means that you're able to transmute it or for whatever reason you're supposed to go through whatever that brings but in a general sense if it can be avoided avoid it because it's not really going to be good for your practice in the long run now what is the end goal of sacred prostitution helping as many people as possible reach their full potential energetically reach their divine self activate and raise their kundalini help them process their shadows help them activate their light body that's the goal how and and, and if you're a man by the way and you're a sacred prostitute and you sleep with a woman same applies difference being is you'll more than likely just feel drained and maybe feel slowed down or have certain obstacles you may not have the same types of issues as far as taking things into yourself it's more of somebody else taking the energy away from you so that's still not a good thing will lead you depleted can still lead to the same issues so either way highly important for you know people to be aware of all of this so i want to now transition to the new part two of the twin flame divine counterpart video okay so i feel like it needs to be said that we are all to some degree mirrors of each other we mirror different aspects back to each other for the purpose of healing when i first started you know in, I want to say enduring, that's the word that comes to mind. When I first started the uh, quote-unquote twin flame experience, I was really blown away by it because I started to think I was insane being able to hear other people's voices in my head. I had a connection to that, you know, fifth dimensional and higher communication and connection in not being confirmed in the 3D things of that nature. But... There is a trap, I'm going to call it the twin flame trap, where people think that trauma bonding means it's a twin flame, and they get obsessed with this concept of twin flame reunion, not realizing anybody can be a mirror. Anybody can be, you know, a soulmate. Anybody can reflect back to you things that need healing, because essentially we're all experiencing a holographic reality with us as the main star within our component of that so as a result we're all going to experience that to some degree the end goal is not to necessarily come into permanent union with these people it is to see what needs to be healed and to be what catalyzed what needs to be catalyzed or healed within ourselves and vice versa so that's what I would say. Now, if we're going to go off of the whole label, then I would say that if we're going off of that label and going off the concept of twin flame fragments, I've had several, and they've all served a purpose for me and that person of either healing, catalyzing, you know, lessons, things of that nature. None of them thus far have been permanent fixtures in my life. And I'm going to use that to kind of segue into what I want to talk about as well. And that is, and, I'm, and again, I'm not saying that's the case for you. If you consider yourself to be on that journey, I'm just saying, don't get caught up in the labels. Don't let yourself get stuck in trauma bonds 
because you bought into this bullshit that there's this one person for you. Now, in some cases, depending on your sole contract, there is. But in most cases, there are multiple people that you may have relationships with throughout the course of your life. You know, some sort of communion or connection. So, you know, <laughs> and it doesn't have to be all at once. I mean, you can if you're into, you know, poly or whatever. But I mean, like, in the sense of each relationship, each encounter representing a different, for example, Kama Sutra position. The Kama Sutra goes really fucking deep. It's not what people think. It is not just sex. It is a representation of the phases in your journey. Just like we are on a spiral. So learn to recognize cycles. Learn to recognize when it's time to release. And when it's time... I don't want to use the word release. Because that to me is release. It's like you're signing another lease. Learn when it's time to let go. <laughs> and learn when it's time to move forward learn when it's time to pause learn when it's time to explore to dive deep you know since the rhythms since the energy currents learn to rec recognize the external reality reflecting back to you and vice versa some of us you know go within others of us go without usually it's a combination of the two some people go without first and then go within some people go within first and then go without. So, you know, do do as you do. But the important thing is just to be, you know, connected. And come to recognize your personal rhythms, your personal cycles in your life. But also, not to get stuck in unconscious patterns that are rooted in trauma. That you've created as a coping mechanism or as a response and that you just do mindlessly. I'm talking about conscious awareness and being in tune to the natural soul rhythms of yourself and those around you. Not to be confused with unconscious trauma patterns, just to be clear. So that's what I have for you guys. I hope it resonates. You know, take it resonates only the rest. We're all in our individual journeys down here. But yeah, I just wanted to uh, talk about that while I was out here hiking. And uh, yeah, take care. Check out my website, thetantricdragoness.com, to book a private Akashic reading or any other reading. Also, Akashic portraits, consultations, shamanic journeys, starseed charts, primordial dragonfire healing, and much more. You can also subscribe to Patreon to learn how to do a lot of this yourself through various templates I've designed. Activate Diamond Consciousness, Activate the Black Flame, Journey the Underworld, Tantric Healing and BDSM, Astral Projection and Power, Shields, Cloaks, Wards, Learning Light Language, Exclusive and Premier Readings, Soul Fragment Retrieval, Advanced Ancestral Work, Creating Your Own Shamanic Sanctuary, and much more. Thanks for your support, and stay tuned for future videos.